So guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my Everyday Carry Personal Survival Kit. And before we get started, as always guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already and want to see more Alaskan content and awesomeness. Anyways guys, without any further ado, God bless and let's get into this. Okay guys, so like I said, today we're going to be looking at this uh, EDC, pretty much basically EDC survival kit. And what I was thinking about when I was designing this kit is that I have a PSK or personal survival kit for bushcraft outing, but nothing really, or bushcraft outing, sorry, <laughs> but nothing particularly uh, survival related with my EDC. I mean, I have a ferro rod and a lighter and a knife, a couple knives, obviously, that could be put into survival situations, but I don't really have a comprehensive survival kit that helps me be prepared for whatever happens in a survival uh, scenario. So that's pretty much how this kit came together. Now, of course, this is in a quintessential Altoids tin because an Altoids tin goes into a pocket very easily. You can carry this in a front pocket and just be prepared for whatever uh, survival situation falls you with this kit and just have it easily on your body. So first things first, I don't actually really need it for this kit, but I thought I would just slip on an extra piece of rubber just because I can and it may prove to be useful in some sort of situation. So opening this kit up, I have around four and a half feet of this is gutted paracord because that's about all I could get to fit in here. But this is the shell of paracord right here. And as you guys can see, I just kind of had it coiled around this whole uh, diameter or kind of like circumference area of this rectangle, if you will. So that's around four and a half feet of gutted paracord. Still very useful and quite strong for whatever cordage options I may need. So the next part is a tops whistle and I just like the tops whistle for this application because the tops whistle is a very flat whistle as you guys can see. It's just a small you know plastic sandwich bag container for picking berries, catching water, whatever you need to do for just general survival applications. So then the next thing is possibly one of the most useful things here is just a couple sets of, or a couple band-aids here. And you know, these are not gigantic as you guys can probably see here. I'll lower the lighting so you guys can actually see. So you guys can see there, they're not gigantic, ba or, they're not gigantic band-aids, but just a couple small little band-aids for uh, whatever small wounds to treat. Band-aids can be really handy. So next to that I have uh, three of these and this is just the inner strands of paracord this is six feet of inner strands and I've just pretty much wound them up in a butterfly coil and just put them in here wherever they would fit so they pretty much all sit here and so once again each one of these is six feet of inner strands and I think I actually yeah so each one of these is just six feet of inner strand. So I have 18 feet of these inner strand paracord pieces. And this stuff is not the most strong uh, cord, but it is strong enough for most applications. And once again, what I really liked was I was able to fit 18 feet of it in three different six foot bundles into this kit very well. So this on top of the four and a half feet of paracord outer shell here is talking well over 20 feet. So the next thing and probably the most obvious thing is the knife. And I'm gonna see if I can get it out now. And of course, this is quintessentially just a Benchmade 5D6 Griptilian. Nothing too special here, just 154 cm. Just a mini grip, and uh, it is a really nice knife to have for survival. And I really like it for a kit like this because it allows you a nice, pretty long blade, you know, in comparison to the actual kit here. And yet, you still have a knife that will fit in here. So you get a nice long blade and a decent sized handle, and it all will fit inside this kit. The part that I know I always get hate for is this hateful compass. This compass does point true north. I will say I found it to be very accurate. I don't know if all these compasses are this accurate, but this one for me has always been accurate. And so this is liquid filled, just button compass. I know some people hate these things, but think what you will about it. 
but I'm not going to be able to put a professional level compass in a kit this small. And it's nice to have something for direction, especially being that Alaska is a place that is not particularly known for being super civilized. So it's really easy to get turned around and not, not know what direction you're going. So the next part to this is I have a small strike pad here and this is just a wood backed. So you guys can see there's wood, it's a small amount of wood, but it's a wood backed strike uh, surface for I'm carrying in this case 10 waterproof matches. I'm probably not gonna pull all of them out of here, but you guys will just have to trust me, there's 10 of them here, and there's just 10 waterproof matches. They're not strike anywheres, but with my experience of strike anywheres, they're not that reliable. Strike anywhere matches, they're not generally that reliable for being strike anywhere. So generally I don't carry strike anywheres because they're not that true to their name. Anyways, aside from that, I also have a netting, or not a netting needle, but a sail needle, or just a very thick canvas needle. And this is, can be good for either making stuff in the field using cordages like such, or you can repair stuff, you know, like your clothing. If you get like a tear, say you're in a car accident or whatever, and you know, your pants or shirt get cut for whatever reason, this cordage here will easily fit into this and you can make repairs of clothing or do whatever you have to do with this needle. So the next thing is more cordage and this is snare wire. Um, this is just army issue old school snare wire and this is once again around six feet of snare wire just bound around itself and pretty useful once again for making snares for setting anything where you need a very small cordage that is very stiff. So that, so those are all the cordage options I have. The next thing is just a small ferro rod. Once again, I believe I've shown in other videos, this knife here will actually, with the spine of this knife, you can actually strike this ferro rod. I'm not gonna do it here on film because I'm trying to preserve the life of this ferro rod just in case it has to be used. But you can strike this ferro rod with the back of this knife. So there's no striker in here uh, for this thing in particular, but just rest assured that that knife can strike the ferro rod. I've tried it before. So the next thing is just a small thing of tweezers and I'm carrying this just in case once again it's another one of those kind of like practical items that you may use this kit for in a more practical thing and it's always nice to have a set of tweezers for just removing small things or maybe you have to do delicate work whatever happens tweezers can be another really nice and really easy thing to carry just like the netting needle so guys hopefully you enjoyed that quick look at my edc survival kit it's pretty basic not too much but it's still in a really nice compact format you can see you can cover it easily with your hand and it easily fits in many different pockets uh, around your body so it's a very easy thing to carry and once again carries just enough survival necessities that if you're launched into a survival situation through your everyday life especially this could happen in Alaska more readily than other places but if you're launched into a survival situation this also helps you to have just the basic survival necessities that you would need to have or maybe want to have for, uh, to help increase your survival odds. And once again, it's just a very basic thing, very easy to carry. And so anyways, guys, that's all for now, and I'm out.